Hello and welcome to the special interview with Haji Drame on THD TV live from Manjai Kunda. Today I'll be talking to Al Haji Papsen, co founder of the Points newspaper and also RSF correspondent in the Gambia. Mr. Sen is also a former editor and publisher of the English language of the former independent newspaper. Senegambia Son. Senegambia Son. <laughs> Thank you so much, um, mm. Uncle Pap, for granting me this um, interview. It is always a pleasure talking to our living legends mm -hmm. um, like you. And also, I'm the Dean of Reuters in, Af you. in Africa. Reuters. Thank, Thank you so Jesus. much. <laughs> We're going to come to all the. First, from the little background I checked about you, you were born in Banjul in October 1950. Yes. Can you tell us something about Al Haji Papsen? Well, uh, I was born October 4th, 1950, Gloucester Street in Banjul. My dad was a uh, Marabu. Uh, he was based in Congo, Zaire, Liberia. I studied uh, foyer, Senegalese, uh, no, French uh, school. And then I continued to Senegal uh, in high school, Dr. Dame de Liban. So with Charbel Elage, uh, well-known businessman in the Gambia, Michel Hoshemi, who is the owner of Banjul Pharmacy and LG, they were my schoolmates. Uh, after completing my high school, I did com uh, mass communication at CST in Dakar. Then after I continued to uh, Ghana, uh, Ghana News Agency, uh, when uh, Reuters uh, uh, took me and uh, sent me to Ghana. But well before, after completing my school, I started my career with Radio Seed. Radio Seed is a private registration owned by a Swedish lady called Brit Bartner. Mm. It was in 1970. I worked there with late Deida Haidara up to 1992. But uh, as you know, 91, we launched uh, the Point newspaper. I myself, Deida uh, Haidara, late Deida Haidara and late Babu Karge. So in a nutshell, I work for Reuters from 76 to date. I'm the oldest stringer of writers in Africa. RSF also, I'm, their old, uh, I'm the oldest uh, st uh, co correspondent in Africa. I also, thank God for that. I thank also, God. you, the same year, you also work with, um, you know, Radio Gambia, and mm. you joined Radio Gambia's commentators to do commentating and, uh, of um, matches you know, that the Gambia 11 then, mm. you know, and other sports, you know, participated in. And uh, you later, you know, become the first Gambian journalist to cover the Africa Cup of Nations from 1978 mm. to 2004. <laughs> and, uh, you know, the World Cup yeah. in 1990, 1994, <laughs> and 1998. Uh, you can follow you, me. Can you recall that a bit? <laughs> uh, of course, uh, I'm glad that, you know, that uh, I have contributed a lot. Uh, as you rightly said, I covered many times Africa Cup of Nations. And also I was media officer of CAF from uh, 1998 to 2004. I, I covered many events uh, for the African Cup of Nations. I covered also the World Cup 90, 1990 in Italy, 94 in US. 98 in France. So uh, I thank God for that. In 2000, in the year 2000, you were also appointed Media press officer, officer yes. of the Confederation of, of African Football CAF mm -hmm. for the Nations Cup hosted by Nigeria and Ghana. And, yes. The Gambia didn't make it to that World Cup though. Mm. How did you get that job? Where the, and what were the requirements then to be a press officer? of the Confederation of African Football? Well, my, uh, my advantage, I like football, I know the rules, I am bilingual, English and French. Uh, it's my advantage, bilingual. Uh, to, to speak English and French is my advantage. Uh, through the recommendation of some friends, 
the former late minister in Zaire, Chipumpum uh, Wachimpumpo. <laughs> he, he was the Minister of Sport uh, of Zaire. Uh, he was a good friend of mine uh, and um, uh, late uh, Mawad, Wad, Mawad Wad, well known technician in Senegal. Uh, they contacted me, they contacted me to CAF. And uh, every two years they renew my contract as a media officer. So I did try, and it's a high to also high, had high regard for me. Yes. During your covering of events in the Africa Cup of Nations and the World Cup, what stood out for you as a correspondent, not only for one country but for a continent? What stood out for you? What was your moment that is unforgettable? Well, before I will come that, I should thank those who helped me, promote me, encourage me in this sport arena. First, Alaji MC Cham, who was the president of the Football Federation for 11 years. Alaji MC has a, has a foresight in the sporting event. He was the one, first one uh, who appointed me a press officer of the Federation of the, uh, of the Gambia Football Federation, and I used to, to travel. Besides him, uh, Alaji Gabi Sose, late uh, Ubi Konate, late Usain Nujai and Babu Sisi, all of them, they used to encourage me a lot, including Tafangom, late Tafangom. Yeah. So we used to travel, attend the African Cup of Nations. They encouraged me a lot, and helping me financially and morally in my career. And uh, that led to many, many good things. But before we come to the good things, what was the journey or how did you describe, you know, the road to Gambian football at that time? How does it look like? What are some of the challenges that the media encounter in promoting the game? Well, that time, in the 80s, in the 70s and 80s, uh, the media was not so developed in the Gambia. About activities besides Radio Gambia, you talk about Radio Gambia, I have a very good relationship with them since 70 up to now. Whenever there's international match, they invite me to boost their team of commentators. Uh, what I'm saying, uh, during the 70s and 80s, there was no newspaper. There was lack of newspapers. I used to send reports to France football. I used to send reports to the Senegalese daily Le Soleil, just to promote the game. Because uh, before any player used to have a uh, contract, uh, if it is in Europe, they will ask you, which paper talk about you? So. You must have an evidence to show that you, are, you have been covered. But now, thank God, uh, you have numerous sports journalists. I thank God for that. Because I, Dupe Joyner, the brother of Remy Joyner, mm -hmm. uh, we are the pioneers in time of writing football, uh, Nanny Gray Johnson, all of them, they contributed a lot for the sport writing. In, in, in the commentary, you had, as you know, Sidi Jame, uh, my boss and friend, Sol Ngai, all of them, they have contributed a lot. Uh, the list goes on, but the pioneers, the veterans who started to promote the game in terms of commentary. You know, the first, Gambia, the first person uh, who did commentary in the Gambia was a British, uh, Don Diamond. John Diamond, he was working at the Cable and Wireless. He made the first commentary in 1969, November, uh, between Real and White Run Trump, in that final, which showed uh, White Run Trump defeating uh, Real, and it was a good football. Uh, now, with the social media, with the electronic media, there's a lot of progress yeah. in terms of promotion of football. 
because I used to remember when I used to go to with the national team, uh, there was no commentary live. I used to cover by telex, send my reports to Radio Gambia. Okay. I send it by telex. There were no uh, social media uh, platform. Uh, yes, and yes. I, I used to cover them. I send the telex by uh, say, uh, describing the game, covering the game, and send it to Radio Gambia. And they used to... This one they used to broadcast. Yeah, broadcast. Mm -hmm. You know, our first commentary live was 79. Myself and uh, Son Jai, uh, the final Gambia Liberia, which Liberia defeated the Gambia, uh, the Tolbert Trophy. Who is the greatest Gambian player that you watch playing during the time of covering active sports? Uh, you know, Biri, you have uh, Lamin Owens. We had uh, talented players. By Male, one. By Male was a great player, he was a scorer. Yes, we had so many talented footballers, uh, but at that time, those people, they were not fortunate. Uh, to be, how to call it, promoted outside to... Just like the others have today? Yes. Going for professional Yeah, professional and, and and money. Yes. Mm. They, they were committed and dedicated to the game because they did very well for the development of football in the Gambia. And still coming back to yourself, after all those hard work, you know, and dedication to the promotion of journalism, because you do not do only football, you are mm. versatile, mm. or even going beyond, you know, everything that was happening in Gambia at the time, mm. you do follow. But you, in 1998, you receive an award from the, you know, International Olympic Committee, IOC, mm. you know, what do you think were the merits, you know, or merits, you know, help you to get to that level? My commitment to sports, the same year, the Moroccan Football Federation gave me an award for football quiz competition about football in Africa. So uh, it was a pleasure for me to win, uh, to, uh, to win such kind of uh, award with Morocco, with uh, IOC and other things. Yeah, that is after you've watched or covered many Olympic Games mm -hmm. and World Cup Games for the Olympic, most started coming. Well, for Olympic Games, uh, I only covered uh, once uh, in China. But despite that, uh, I covered many events for the African Cup of Nations and World Cup. And, World Cup. Mm -hmm. and in also 2010, in 2010, 2010 mm -hmm. the International Press Institute named you a World Press Freedom Hero mm -hmm. after you, you were even arrested in the Gambia. Yes, yes, yes. You know, by the former, former president of the Repo uh, Republic of the Gambia. Yes. You know, what do that add to your unique story? Well, it was a plus to my career because uh, to win such kind of international award was not only pride for me, but for the Gambia and all Gambians. Uh, to be recognized worldwide, to be declared World Press Freedom Hero with small Gambia, uh, I said, is a big challenge for me because I will sacrifice my life to continue to promote press freedom in the Gambia. And tell us a bit about that difficult moment when you were arrested just because of doing the job that you love doing and for humanity in general. First, I was arrested in 1995. Uh, with uh, two colleagues, Alin Badrasau, Prime Arnes, uh, revolt at mile two. We are arrested for one week and they were, they were asking us our source. My bitter ear, <laughs> I, I, that I can call it yes. with your permission, was 2009. Why? I was arrested many times, I was uh, detained, I was jailed because of my work, because uh, of my belief on press freedom. But thank God, uh, everything is over uh, with the commitment, the passion and the dedication that I have for the job. I did a lot of sacrifices, 
it was not easy in Jammeh time to run a press because the challenges was either you'll be assassinated or your media house will be burned or something like that. But thank God, God, God protected us. There was a time even the then government challenged my nationality. Yeah, I was coming to that because your nationality mm. was also questioned. Yes, you yes. You're not a Gambian, you're yeah. a Senegalist. Yeah, but, but they didn't know the nationality because uh, the constitution is very clear. One of your parents born in the Gambia, you are a Gambian. You can born here in the Gambia with foreign uh, parents and you are not a Gambian. You see the difference? Yes. You can be born here in the Gambia and your parents are foreigners. Does not mean you are qualified to be a citizen of this country. Yes. <laughs> but, but you even went to the courts mm. and won that case. Of course. You know, that because, you were because my dad uh, got a compound at 42 Gloucester. I got his passport. I got the title deed of 42 Gloucester. You know, you cannot say somebody living in Gloucester is not a Balmurian. Mm. Maybe Tobacco Road, you can hesitate. But Gloucester Street in Bandul. You are one of the oldest cities, yes. the towns in the city. Yes. And uh, still on the arrest, because you were not arrested or jail alone, you were with some Sam of the top yes, we were, journalists that we are, we are. many Gambia thought was going to be the beginning of the end mm. of Gambian press, because mm. those were the movers of the press. We, what you, you, are, you, you, you have Samsar, uh, Ibrahim Masawadi, Emil Toure, uh, Sarata, Javi. You have late Pamodufa. No, no, I'm coming yes, for late yes, Pamodufa. Yes, yes. I cannot for, forget Pamodufa. <laughs> yes, yes. I couldn't. Pam we are six, but thank God we spent there only about four weeks, because the international community all they rose and uh, protested about our arrest. We are supposed to serve two years, yes. but thank God with the support of the religious leaders, the international community. We are, we are pardoned and we are given amnesty. Mm. From 2000 up to date, mm. you are serving as the life honorary president of the Gambia Sports Journalist Association, SJAG. Mm. What are the impressions of this generation of sports reporting with the technology that we are available, like we said earlier, mm. in your in no time? Far different with the technology and uh, you have numerous journalists, sport journalists, compared before. So I'm glad to have uh, to get the number uh, plus because people uh, who desire to be a sport journalist, some of them impress me, and they are doing a good job. I think uh, we should encourage them, give them the opportunities, which is uh, unfortunate in the Gambia. Now, the sport journalists, they don't travel, neither with the national team or other sport association, which is, which is wrong. Government should help the reporters, the main newspapers and radio, to help them to cover the game outside, even JRTS, to cover overseas our international matches. It, it will be very good. And that, you know, that will take me back to your, your co-founding member of the Point newspaper, mm. who you've worked with many, many years, mm. and that you know each other, you know the strength of each other, mm. you know. How do you manage to continue going after he was assassinated in this country? Uh, I, to be honest with you, when he was assassinated, uh, really, that time, uh, it was sudden, but uh, a good friend of mine, uh, Demba Jao, Demba Jao, yes. came to me, said to me, although you have pressure, your relatives, your family, all they ask you to keep the job. But what I can tell you, either you leave the job or you continue, you will die one day. Continue the struggle. So with that, uh, I have faith and I decided to reopen the point and continue. But thank God, because uh, when we started with the point, we won several international awards in Germany, in Australia, 
in South Africa, in Zambia, even in Dubai last year. So thank God for the honor, for the prestigious honor, not only for me, but for the Gambia. How do you describe today the commitment of the people that you manage today hmm. in one of the oldest news, you know, newspaper you know, uh, institution in this country? Uh, uh, the point is not only media house, but it's an institution. Why currently three, you have two cabinet ministers and the government spokesman all who, who pass through to the point. Uh, Dr. Mumudu Tangara, Foreign Affairs, uh, Ibrahim Masila, Minister of Transport, all started their career with the point. Sankare, Ibrahim Sankare, Government Spokesman, started with the point. Bokar C, Bokar C, OIC, started with the point. Dr. Omar Bari, who was uh, PS in Defense, Youth and Sports, mm -hmm. and Higher Education and Ministry Institution also contributed for the point. And uh, the list goes on. There are so many in Europe, in America, studying or working there. Uh, Babukar Senghor, who was my editor, Abaya Jiba, mm. all they are, all they are my uh, ed uh, former editors, but they are trying very hard and they are in America doing very well. The, uh, the list is so long, Gambians who contributed to the point a newspaper that I cannot name. The list is very long. You are listening to the special interview live coming to you on Tales of Ajidrami TV from Manjaikunda. Like I said, we're having the doing in the building today. Uh, Alaji Papsen, co-founder of the Point newspaper, and um, he's been the honorary life president of the Gambia Sports Journalist Association because that's something that worldwide he's reckoned of. He has been someone that promoted sport not only in the Gambia but Africa in general. Now let's talk about the press freedom. Mm. You know, you've witnessed the First Republic, <laughs> how press was treated. Mm. You, re you know, you witnessed the Second Republic, how press was treated, which well, unfortunately you were jailed doing your job. Mm. And you have also witnessed or witnessing the Third you know, Republic of this country mm. and uh, regime of this country. And recently we've seen your article on the Point newspaper after the Gambia was ranked mm. among one of the top African countries mm. to respect the for press freedom, giving mm. press freedom, you know, a chance to, to, to come back. How, how do you describe that? Is it a win for the future press men and women? Uh, as you know, I'm the representative of RSF in the Gambia. And I told you I'm the dean, the most serving member yeah. In the continent. So I thank God for that. Gambia has made a significant progress in press freedom because since the Barrow government came in 2017, up to now there was no journalist jail, there was no media house burned, there was no uh, journalist killed, uh, and uh, we are working up to now in a cordial atmosphere without interference in our editorial. So compared to Jame's regime, far different. When Jame, uh, during Jame's time, you, we, were about, um, we were among the five last in Africa. So you see different. Now we are among the five top in Africa. So come Last year we are eight. This year fifth. And I'm sure if government continue yeah. the cordial relationship, they can top the group. What do you think is the reason of this cordial relationship between the the government and the press? Because normally it is difficult for press and the government to to be no. under the same roof. Yes. So what do you think is helping Gambia to enjoy that? You know when. Since the Barrow uh, uh, government assumed office, the members of the government, uh, they have an open door policy with the journalists by appointing media officers 
in the Arab ministries to uh, the director of press, I mean, Bojan Sisonho, she's very open to the media. Any press release she used to release it immediately. Uh, it's not like before. But like before, you have theaters and daily observer. But now, all the uh, media houses are enjoying uh, the access to information without hindrance. Uh, what I want to say, we should be responsible. We should be objective as a journalist. We, don't, we should not have any agenda. I spoke to young journalists, I advised them not to take side neither for government or the opposition, but to, not to be critical, but just to be objective, to do their job without fear of failure. Government, uh, although it's sometimes difficult, we have some itches because, as you know, teeth and tongue clash yeah. and much more than what we have. So that's life. That's life. Well, the media has grown. Today you go to the independent stadium as an honorary president of a sports journalist and you see a huge you know, number of journalists reporting sports. There are many media outlets mm. also in this country. But others, you know, critics also argue that it's been taken for granted and no facts checking now. Yeah. People just go and you know media yeah. Yeah. and say what they want to say. Yeah. You know, yeah. do you do do as a legend, uh, living legend with this young generation that you know many are aspiring to become people like you? What will be the unique advice that one can put in mind to to reach far in becoming a, you know a, 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 a seasoned journalist in this country? When I was president, uh, I requested two GLC forms to train journalists. Uh, Musa Sise also is trying very well during his tenure. So this trend should continue with uh, Saint Mukhtari also who was president. They did very well and uh, what the young journalists should do, learn mm -hmm. from their veterans. Those who are experience, they should know the games, the rules, and also to be objective in their reporting. And they need more training. I have two questions before we go to the, mm -hmm. uh, the end of the interview. Um, Mr. Sim, one thing many of my generation admire uh, you for is how you are able to keep record mm -hmm. at this age. Mm -hmm. You know, um, you remember the historic moments in Gambian football, basketball, athletics, and all the other sports that were practiced during the day. I remember speaking to one of my colleagues saying that it's because you have you are unique in one thing. You are if you know French, you did English and also Arabic. What is the secret of this keeping memory? In a nutshell. It's God gift. Yes, it's God gift. <laughs> it's God gift. <laughs> do you go through your Do you go through your book sometimes? For instance, when you are going for live commentaries, that's why every commentator want to have you mm. as a co-commentator mm. because you add spices mm. and you give flavor that mm. even your generation will want to glue to that particular institution. Mm. What do you do when you go for events? I prepare myself. Sometimes. I took my notes as a freshman and go to the stadium and make sure that when I talk, people will take notes and uh, be happy about the commentary. <laughs> Finally, your generation, like they say, you know, you follow the, the, the footsteps of the elders mm -hmm. to be able to reach where you are. But today we've seen football has grown a huge interest everywhere you know the big amount of money paid to every you know sectors and that also increase the chaos in our leadership of football mm -hmm. when there are elections you see you know there are many mm -hmm. you know many 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 attentions going given to the elections of football administration today mm -hmm. the JNOC and also even the day-to-day -day affairs of our local uh, you know football clubs you know 
What the money or is it the love for the game? Uh, at first, you know, when I talk about my career, I mentioned some names. Because this money coming to football started in 2000 in Shifa, some kind of song. But well before, some people sacrifice their title gifts to get loans to make so football happen. Let Oseno Yai. Let Kodi They sacrifice and give their title gifts to the banks to make sure football. Because there's people, they like football, they, uh, they have sacrificed a lot for the football development in the Cambria. They should not be forgotten. What is your best memory of Cambrian football since you started? Your best moment that you always remember whenever somebody asks you, Alaji Pabsen, what do you remember the highest moments of your old career in Cambrian sport? What would be? <laughs> Uh, it's a party education. <laughs> it's a party education. Uh, I will answer you next time. <laughs> you, you will allow me that. No, finally, this will definitely be my final question. How do you still continue going? There are many of your age mates and colleagues who will not be able to do what you are doing today. You are always active and present where you are called. What is, what is the secret behind that? Well, uh, thank God, uh, during evening time, I work in the house and also I thank my wife, who was a retired nurse, who, uh, who is very, uh, how to call it, uh, personal about the yeah. food. Your food. Your yeah. food. Yeah. Yes. food. Yes. Your kids, anyone taking a job? Uh, no. Or they into something else? No, no. So you they, were, they were discouraged by the young religion. So they all decided to study something different? Yes, yes. How do you feel about that? Yeah. Well, <laughs> very sad, but they were discouraged. Yeah. One of them, she's a lady, she's in UK, she wanted to be journalist. But when I, when I was there, in 1995, mm -hmm. when we were, she said, mm -hmm. I, uh, I'm no longer interested. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so very much. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure Thank talking you. to a living legend like you. Thank you. And we continue to pray to God for you to still be with us here and guide us to the land. It's a pleasure having you. Amen. And we are very grateful to taking all this time at this age to come to our studio. Amen. You know, to, unless you have any other thing to say to Gambia. No, no. Thank you so very much. No, thank you very much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Well, he's been Al Haji Papsen, like I said, co founder of the Points newspaper. Mr. Sen is a legend in a many, many ways. And we continue to pray for his good health and mm -hmm. long life mm -hmm. to be with us. Join us next week with another legend. Until then, I've been your host, Thank you. Mm -hmm.